everybody, I'm Marissa. And I'm Morgan. And today we're gonna to be talking about a crowd favorite. Um, we're gonna be talking about the difference between a butterfly and a moth. There's quite a few physical differences that we're gonna be able to talk about, but the biggest difference um, really is just in the name, right? Scientists use these names to uh, group living things into different categories. And so moths and butterflies are just another name that are, are used to group them. Um, into more bite-sized pieces. But they're both part of the same order, which is Lepidoptera. Um, within that order, there's about 160,000 species of moths and only 20,000 species of butterflies. So today I have with me an African moon moth, and you can find these in Africa. Uh, and these guys are part of the silk moth family, and so what that means is they actually don't have any mouth parts when they emerge as an adult moth. Uh, and that's because they're only going to live for a couple of days. They have just enough time to go on a date and then lay some eggs for their, uh, the next generation. And here I have our butterfly specimen. This is called a king swallowtail. It can be found in Central America. Um, and some parts of the southern United States. Um, in contrast to our moon moth specimen, this uh, individual does have mouth parts. So it does have that, that classic uh, butterfly proboscis that it uses um, to eat. Generally, we can find moths active at nighttime. Uh, and I say generally because insects are so diverse that there's usually one or two individuals that break the rules. And for the moths, uh, we have a family called sphinx moths or hawk moths. Uh, and you can find a couple species of those here in Utah. You'll actually see those during the daytime. And uh, you might think you're looking at a hummingbird at first because they are a very large moth and they hover and they fly very quickly, kind of in the same pattern that hummingbirds fly in. Butterflies are generally daytime flying. And so uh, here in the conservatory, it's daytime and a lot of our butterflies are flying around, very happy to be active and eating. Um, but just like there's exceptions to our, uh, our moths where we have day flying moths, we also have butterflies that are um, something called crepuscular, meaning that they're active uh, at dawn and at dusk. Um, so one of those species of butterflies is the giant owl butterfly, which we do have here at the Thanksgiving Point Butterfly Biosphere. And so if you ever uh, come visit us in the conservatory right around uh, dusk, usually around eight o'clock, um, you will be able to see these owl butterflies that are generally pretty um, still most of the day just wake up right as the sun is going down and start to be very active um, just for that short period of time. Let's take a closer look at their bodies and see what kind of differences we can see. Um, the next characteristic I'm going to point out is the body shape. So moths tend to be very heavy bodied and oftentimes they're very fuzzy. Uh, it makes them really cute and, and pettable looking. So we have this very heavy bodied moon moth here. And in, uh, in contrast, butterflies do tend to be more slender bodied. Um, there are some species of butterflies that still are, are a little bit heavier bodied, but they, compared to a lot of our moths, they're much more slender. Um, there is kind of this, this fuzzy, hairy fur present, um, but in comparison to our moths, uh, it's, it's less drastic. So the next characteristic we're gonna point out is the shape of the antenna. So you can see on our moth, she's got really feathery antenna. A lot of moths have that. Some of them just have a straight, smooth set of antenna. The, the main point is that there's an absence of a bulb or a barb at the tip. Uh, these feathery antenna actually come in handy really well for a lot of male moths. Um, they tend to be more feathery than the antenna of the female moths. Um, and that is because antenna are used to pick up chemical cues in the air. Um, so with these moths, the females are just gonna sit somewhere in their landscape emitting pheromones saying, I'm emerged, I'm ready to mate, I wanna have kids. And the male is gonna be able to really easily pick up those chemical cues because they have all that extra surface area on their antenna. Butterflies tend to have that very slender, um, not feathered, not really ridged antenna that oftentimes will come to a club at the end. And so while the antenna are used for kind of the same thing, it's not as prominent as in our moth specimens. 
So all of Lepidoptera, that's the butterflies and the moths, go through the metamorphosis, which is where they're turning from a caterpillar into a butterfly. And they do that as a chrysalis. So both moths and butterflies form a chrysalis. Um, a lot of moths will actually form a cocoon around their chrysalis. So not all of them, um, but a lot of them will. And this is actually oral secretions. So they basically spit a safety blanket around them and, as a caterpillar. And then when they feel safe, they form the chrysalis. Um, so this is the chrysalis of the uh, king swallowtail that we looked at just a minute ago. Um, and the really cool thing about this process is that sometimes we think that they, they make this, this outer covering all the way around them and that's the chrysalis. But actually the chrysalis is their exoskeleton. So they shed their last caterpillar skin and underneath that is this, uh, this chrysalis exoskeleton. Uh, we hope you go out looking for some moths and butterflies later today or tonight. Um, if you're looking for moths during the daytime, one, if you have hummingbird plants, watch for those hummingbird moths or sphinx moths or hawk moths. Uh, and if you're looking for them at night, um, you might find them around lights, will be attracted to lights. Um, if you're hunting, again, for moths during the daytime, they might be flat against tree trunks. They might be hiding in the grass in your yard. And as you walk through, you might stir them up. So just always keep your eyes open. Yep, and as far as butterflies go, uh, a good rule of thumb is to look for nectar-filled flowers. These butterflies like to feed on, on nectar. Um, here in Utah, you're likely to, to start seeing them up the canyons, um, in your gardens and things like that. Um, but we encourage you to take pictures. Um, don't grab them. They have very delicate wings um, that they rely on to get away from predators. So take lots of pictures, um, share them with us. We would love to see what you find in your own, uh, in your own neighborhoods. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to see more. Happy lep hunting. Could that be a fun outtake? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Loopers. I'm a host plant. Look, I must be eucalyptus. <laughs> <laughs>